Hey everybody, we are live. This is Protected Trust Live and joining me today for I think the third or fourth time. Something remember? like that. Something like they that. They just it's, go by so quick you can't great. remember. Is uh, Steve Cornell, the uh, service desk manager here at Protected Trust. And today we're discussing one of my favorite topics. I don't know if it's your favorite, but... Self-service password reset. It's a mouthful, but all it means is that the user is able to reset their own password. Um, this hasn't been a feature in previous versions of Exchange. Um, right. And, you know, speaking on behalf of the service desk, <laughs> I don't know how many password reset email the ratio is to uh, I mean, other tickets. Industry standard for most help desks around most companies is like 20%. 20% of all the tickets that you get is password reset related. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it definitely helps out a lot in, in our case with uh, having, uh, giving the option for users to reset their own passwords that way. You know, I mean, there, there are a lot of companies out there who have, uh, you know, outsourced IT where they have to sit on hold for a while and wait for somebody to get on the phone or they have to, you know, reach out to somebody else and wait. Whereas now, you know, they have the ability to just reset it for themselves within, you know, less than a minute. Mm -hmm. So it comes in handy. So. Well, what I thought we would do today is, uh, you know, go over the benefits, mm -hmm. you know, aside from the fact that it frees up your, your help desk from, right. you know, that 20% of tickets that are going in, um, but also give a quick demonstration of how it works in case people, I mean, I'm sure people have reset their passwords on other accounts before, right. uh, but just to show, you know, the different, uh, different ways that they can authenticate themselves to reset their password, because that's really the biggest concern that we've had when we've been doing host exchange was, how do you get someone to say who they are? How do you verify that the person that you're speaking with on the phone or dealing with through email is exactly who it needs to be the person to request it? Because I mean, you know, nowadays, especially in the last live stream that you did with, you know, a lot of the breaches and the hacks that are going on right now, mm -hmm. I mean, phishing attempts are huge and, you know, social engineering, things like that. I mean, uh, you know, if you have a really laxed help desk that doesn't really go through a lot of verification uh, in order to change things like this, you have, people that can just call and say, hey, I'm so-and-so, the CEO of the company, I need to reset my password. And if your company doesn't have something in place that can safeguard against things like that, then you have a really big problem. Right, and so that would lead to a lot of angry yes. end users, but the admins would thank us because right. we're just right. following, you know, not only their procedure, but you know, standard practice. Um, because any, anyone can call and start yelling at you and saying, I need access to my account right now. I need you to reset my password and blah, yeah. blah, blah. So not only would we have the admin have to write in, right. but then we would go through all the checks to make sure that it wasn't being spoofed. Right. Like look at the message header, see where it originated from. That, that is a, a big rule, at least for my guys out there. And it's been, you know, ever since I've been here is that you never do those types of account changes over the phone. I mean, there's no way to to verify who it is. So in order to avoid any sort of issues with any of our clients, we always make it a standard that, you know, unfortunately sometimes people get upset, you know, that we have to do that. But when we explain, you know, if, you know, we, we basically use the phrase, you know, if, if you're, if you imagine that somebody called in and wasn't you, and we gave them access to your account, mm -hmm. that would be a lot worse than having to deal with, you know, waiting a little bit for a password reset, but now they don't even have to do that. You know, they can just reset it themselves with their own verification information, so. Right, it takes it takes away the error of being human. So right. let's say you let, have a lapse in judgment and you feel sorry for the person on the other end of <laughs> right, the phone, and right. you're like, okay, I'll reset your password just this once. Um, and all it takes is that one time right. for the account to be compromised. So it takes it away from, um, you know, your help desk and it gives it to the computer to analyze and right. to, you know, Authenticate. Right. And, and, you know, a lot of the, you know, other than reducing costs for, for IT admins, mm -hmm. you know, people that are actually supporting the end users, you know, it, it also, uh, it, it drives mobility. I mean, it allows people to be able to reset their own passwords when they're away from the office. You know, uh, you know, big places that have in-house IT would normally have to pick up the phone and call their help desk and ask them to do a password reset. Uh, but if they're away from the office, now they got to call in, you know, they're, you know, using their cell phone to try to call, maybe they're on hold. But, you know, in this case, you, you can quite literally anywhere with an internet connection reset your own password. So Exactly. It, um, so, right, what I, what I think we'll do right now is just show um, how it's configured very quickly in the admin center. So this isn't something the end user does. This is something that we would do as the um, cloud service provider or your own local admins can do this if they have access to uh, the Azure panel. Uh, so right now we're in Azure, and we got there by going to the normal portal.office.com and clicking on Azure. And then we're going to scroll all the way down to Password Reset. And right now we see that it is not enabled for anything. Um, we do have a choice to 
put it in different groups too. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that has to be company wide. Right. Um, so if you have like a set of users who refuse to want to adopt this policy, even though everyone right. should be adopting it, um, that is an option to do. Um, but right now I'm just going to set it to all for this uh, test company here and save it. And while you're doing that, I will say for, for everyone watching that, you know, that at Protected Trust, when we onboard anybody in the 365, uh, we enable this feature by default. And what he's doing right now isn't enforcing it for any users. So when you do turn this on, uh, uh, what will happen is when somebody goes to log into the portal, they're going to see a, a request for a couple of verification options. Uh, one of which is an alternative email address, so like a non-work related email address that you could use to receive an email uh, to reset your own password or uh, a phone number. So a mobile device can call or text you a code, a landline, if you have users that don't feel comfortable using you know, uh, uh, their personal cell phones for work, we do come across that right. a, a little bit. So that, uh, and, and that's on yeah. the, the very next screen here, mm -hmm. is um, those four options that you're able to choose from. So right, alternative email, um, which we advise against actually because of um, kind of what we discussed on the last stream was that once someone's in, they can set up forwarding rules. Mm -hmm. And so that just renders the um, email method useless because now it forwards that request right. to a different mailbox and then they're able to type in whatever code it is. Yeah, not to mention if in most cases, like what you guys discussed before, if, if you have an account that's compromised, the likelihood that somebody used that password on another account somewhere else is really high. I mean, right. in most cases, somebody tries to use the same password for all their services, but if one gets hacked, then you know everything else is potentially compromised as well, especially, you know, or in this case, the alternative email address. Right. Um, so, right, mobile phone, which is the one that we've been pushing, right. is, um, you know, you download the app and it'll send you, is that the same thing or will it call you? Well, no, th what this will do is it will actually either it'll call you with mm -hmm. a number, with a code, or it'll text you a code. Uh, the Azure Authenticator app is uh, what we use for MFA, for multi-factor authentication. Oh, okay, that, yeah. that's good to know. Mm -hmm. um, and then, right, so we had a question in one of our um, other YouTube streams, which was, MFA, can I do alternative email address? And we had to break the news. No, right. you know, you can do it for self-service password reset, right. uh, which we're kind of advising against right now. But um, so MFA, no alternative email address, right. but uh, with self-service password reset, you can do it. Yep. Um, and you just went over our office phone and security question, which is what I'm going to do because it's the easiest one because I don't okay. want to give out my office phone. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm uh, so I went ahead already and saved that. So um, what we'll do now is sign into one of our test accounts. Whoops. You had the screen up for a while. I had the screen up for too long. All right. So this would be the page that even if your password's Give your passwords. Even if your users sign in all the time uh, to the portal instead of going into Outlook to check their email, mm -hmm. um, they will receive this prompt once they go to portal. Correct. And that's that should only happen one time. Right. Yeah. Um, so encourage your users to just go through the process. It takes only a few seconds. Um, so from the previous page, I chose office phone, I believe, and also uh, security questions. Mm -hmm. um, and I put I only the parameter I only need to have one of these complete. Right. And so, like you saw on the other screen is you, you can force your users to have all of the options uh, if, that's, if that's what you want. You want them to have the most amount uh, uh, you know, of, I guess, a successful password reset mm -hmm. chances that you can give them. So if you limit them to only one you know, and it's a security question and they happen to forget the security question, then you're taking another phone call you know, because they can't reset their password now. So if you, you know, it's, it's recommended that you at least give them two options uh, and, uh, you know, rec uh, not recommend, but make it mandatory that you fill out both of those options. That way, if one fails, the other one's fine. If their phone is dead and they can't get a text message, mm -hmm. uh, then the alternative email address one would, you know, be the one that you fall back on because, you know, chances are you're on the internet, you're trying to reset your password. So. Yeah, really good point, really good point. Um, so I chose uh, three security questions, which was the minimum, by the way. Mm. Uh, you can go all the way up to five if you want. Wow. Um, so what is, I just chose easy ones, so you probably want to stick with harder ones. Uh, spaghetti. And then what is my first pet's name? Spaghetti. Oh, well, that's interesting. And what is your childhood nickname? Spaghetti. Also spaghetti. Wow. So I'm going to save those. Oh, two of your answers are identical. Oh. Wow, look at that. How about, um, that's actually a great security feature. Yeah, yeah. I did not know that you couldn't give uh, the same answer, but that's 
Yeah. Um, Interesting. Right. So it's actually a good practice, which is something that we learned from one of our um, one of our phishing videos was if you are filling out security questions, it's actually really good practice to have a different answer than what the question's asking. Oh wow. So for what is your favorite food, you know, you type in like what what's your hometown, and uh -huh. you know, you reverse them so that if you. someone happens to know you you know, really well, like I know you. Right. I, I could just go into <laughs> right. your account and answer your security questions. Uh, so we'll say this. What was my, uh, how about um, Fluffy? That's a good first dog's name. And I can't name myself Fluffy. Uh, how about um, Stevie? There you go. All right. So remember, I only chose the, uh, having to have one of these. Right. Um, so it's not going to force you to fill out the other one. Right. Uh, so I'll just click finish, and I don't want to save that to my web browser. That's poor. And then ask you to sign in. Looks good. Don't save. And now I'm in my account like everything's normal. Okay. Um, so, right, what does it actually look like to reset your password? Well, very familiar to the screen that we just filled out. It's going right. to give me those um, same questions again. So we'll click Forgot Password, and I'll have to fill out the CAPTCHA, which I think it does for most things. Make sure that, well, the first standard test to make <laughs> right. sure that you're not a computer or a bot. So right, there, there's those questions again. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all it is. Um, I personally don't like the, the question one, since it is easy for someone who knows you to right. do it. But I, I like mobile phone, because I always have my phone on me. Um, Most people do. I mean, mobile phones are, are always the go-to for that. I mean, that's the reason why we push uh, the Azure Authenticator app, you know, for MFA when we configure that for our tenants, for our clients, is, you know, having a, that second layer, uh, you know, some people don't really like it because it's an additional thing that they have to do. So having to type in something every time you log into, you know, OA or you go to add your mailbox to Outlook or something along those lines, having to do an additional uh, step is, is always inconvenient, but that's that's kind of the double-edged sword to additional security. Right. I mean, having that sacrifice to, to do that every so often is worth, you know, not losing your identity or having somebody break in, you know, to any of your accounts. So, you know, the, the mobile device makes it really easy, um, you know, for the MFA because you can just push an approve button. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on this side, it's really easy because it just texts you a code. You type in, um, I think it's either a four or six digit code and, and you're, you're, you know, you're back right into your work. Or, or a phone call. Sure. If you wanted to. Absolutely. Um, at least that's the only option for um, your office phone. Right. Because they can't receive text you, messages. Yeah, no, we're, we're not there yet. <laughs> Technology-wise, we're not no, there. No, we're not. Okay. We're not there yet. Um, well, a anything else for self-service password reset? Well, I, I mean, you know, we were discussing, you know, discussing the benefits of it. And, you know, on the IT side, you know, we discussed uh, being able to reduce phone calls and, and cut down on things. And, you know, on an IT perspective, uh, you know, the less tickets that you get, the more money that you save mm -hmm. as a company, right? So you have you, to hire less people to do right. the job. So that's 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 always a plus, you know. I mean, on the the self service uh, password side for the users, um, you know, basically uh, there's a there's a few options here, you know, uh, on what to do. And you know, that if the user knows their password but they want to change it to something new, mm -hmm. then they can just log in and change it. You know, they they, they have the ability yes. to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, with self service password turned off, they wouldn't have the ability to do that. So that's another thing for people to know is if that option that you showed um, is not turned on and you successfully log in to your account and you know go to your passwords and go to change it, it'll tell you that your administrator is not allowing you to do that. Mm -hmm. So even if you weren't locked out or forgot about your password, you still wouldn't be able to change your own password without that turned on. So even if you don't want to enforce any of those options and you just want to give people the ability to change their passwords when they can already get in it, mm -hmm. as you know, I mean, some people have you know, uh, been using accounts like this at work for, you know, for years and they have their own regimen on when they want to change their passwords. So every, whether they do it every 90 days or, you know, a couple times a year, they want to be able to go in there and change it without having to bug anybody. So, you know, turning that on also allows them to do that. Uh, and then, you know, it, it can send the text message, it can make the phone calls, it can send email addresses, you know, and it can even unlock, it can even, you can even use that to unlock your account if, if there is a lockout policy. So that, that's something that we didn't really touch on and, and you know, there, there are options within Azure when you enable self-service password to do a password policy. You can, uh, you can go ab above Microsoft's complexity, which is already pretty complex. Yep. Um, you, can, you, you, know, you can set certain standards, you can set lockout policies, you know, every three failures, five failures, seven failures, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, and you can also, I believe, set a lockout time. 
So if somebody gets locked out, they have to wait 30 minutes or, or so, and then they can attempt to do it again. Uh, and uh, th there's, a, there's a lot of options in there though, but you know, IT admins definitely would be able to mimic whatever lockout policies they have now with whatever on-prem you know, AD that they have, whatever they're using. When they move to 365, you know, we can definitely mimic any of those policies in 365. It's all built in. Very cool. Yep. Well, you did it again, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. Uh, so if, if you have any questions about self-service password reset, um, I know, like, like you said, it's something that we do by default. So yep. most of our users have probably already gone through this. and Absolutely. Don't they did it so quickly, they don't even realize that, yep. it, <laughs> that they have it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, take the time. Uh, if you're not a client of ours, set it up for your organization and have your users spend the, what, 15 seconds that it takes to, right. to set it up. It's a good time save for your support desk and right. it adds a whole bunch of security to your uh, company. Absolutely. So for Steve, I'm Steve. If you like our uh, content, please click the like button or the subscribe button. And also thank you to our clients who make these live streams possible. Thanks, everyone.